All right, I want to do a real quick video here talking about prophecies in the New Testament that confirm that the New Testament is uh, written by God, okay, inspired by God. And we're going to start out here watching a little bit of a video from Rabbi Mordecai Kraft. He is a lost Jew. Um, he's not a saved man. And you're going to see why I say that here. Uh, I don't hate him. I actually, uh, we, we prayed for him quite a bit. And uh, I hope he gets saved, but he's definitely not a saved man uh, for you know the fact that he rejects, excuse me, rejects Jesus Christ. Let's watch a little bit of the video here. But prophecy has to be even more radical than that, because prophecy has to be something which has to come true, not in a general way, but in a very specific way to be prophecy. Now let me ask you a question: Why is it dangerous? to try to be a prophet. Why is being a prophet a dangerous profession? Number one, credibility. Because if I want to start a religion, for example, and I'm going to say a prophecy, if my prophecy doesn't come true, what does it say about my religion? Yes. It's false. Because what is prophecy? How could you know what's going to happen in the future? The only way you can know the future is if you have a connection to the one who controls the future. Who is that? God. So if I give a prophecy and the prophecy does not come true, I've really shot my credibility in the foot. You know, I don't mean to knock any other religions. You know, I don't like to knock other religions, except when I have to. In Christianity, there happens to be one major prophecy that they have in the New Testament. You know what that prophecy is? The Jew will never return to the land of Israel. Now, that was a safe prophecy to make in the year 500. You know why? Because in the year 500, where were we? Exiled. We were exiled to every corner of the earth, and Eretz Yisrael was a wasteland. And to say the Jew is never going to come home was a safe, safe bet. Okay, let me stop there for a minute. Um, uh, the, uh, Rabbi Kraft there is quite deceived, okay? Um, the New Testament was not written in 500, all right? Um, the prophecy of the Jews not coming back to their homeland, again, it's like, uh, actually the New Testament says quite the opposite of that. Uh, it says that the, that the Jews would come back to their homeland. So what he's saying here is completely baseless. I mean, I'm looking at the comments and things in this video and people are like, what are you talking about? You know, it's just ridiculous. And he never even gives a chapter and verse. Um, he's a liar. I mean... I care about the guy. I, I'd love to see him get saved, but he's a liar. He's on his way to hell. Okay? Let me just show you something real quick here. Deuteronomy chapter 18. We're going to look at the test for a false prophet. What he's saying here is true as far as, as, far as a, a prophet has to be accurate for them to be from God. They have to be able to accurately predict the future. Deuteronomy chapter 18, uh, verse. we'll start in verse 18. It says here, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and, I, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that, what's, that, that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Receive the death penalty. And if, thou shalt, and if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? Good question. How do we know if this is from God or not? Verse 22. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Okay? And there is some fear that and reverence that should be there for a true prophet of God. And I did a, a whole video on this uh, liar, Paul Begley, and uh, I called him Big Lie. And uh, Paul Begley came out with his predictions, his prophecies for, I forget what year it was, 2013, 2014, something like this. And he said, I forget which, what the thing was. I think it was the, the, new, or the uh, Great Tribulation would start, and he goes, 50% chance. <laughs> It's like, no, that doesn't work. If you're a prophet of God, it's 100%. And if you say anything and it doesn't come to pass, 
you're not from God. Very simple. Now we're going to turn back to the New Testament here. Second Peter verse or chapter 1 verse 19 says we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost Okay, then chapter 2 goes into warning about false prophets. All right, so the New Testament claims to be a more sure word of prophecy. Rabbi Mordecai Kraft, however, just said in 500 AD, you know, uh, that this prophecy was given that the Jews would never come back to their land. And he doesn't give you any chapter or verse on it. But let's continue watching a little bit more of this stupid nonsense from Mordecai Kraft. And I'm going to show you where he's going with this thing, but we'll watch a little bit more. There's only one problem. What happened in 1948? We won the War of Independence against five invading Arab countries, and we established a new state of Israel. What did that do to that prophecy? Well, you know what the Vatican did with that prophecy? They said it doesn't mean the Jew won't return to the land of Israel. It says the Jew will never return to Jerusalem. 1967. What happened in 1967? The Six Days War. The Jordanians started shelling us and we said, just don't shell us. Don't come in the war. We won't attack you. They didn't listen. They believed the Egyptian reports that Tel Aviv was burning. And King Hussein entered the fight. We fought back and we took Jerusalem in 1967. You know what the Vatican did? Jerusalem is an international city. It doesn't belong to the Jews. Guess why they said that? Because the prophecy says the Jew will never return to the land, and the prophecy turned false. Theologically, that could be very dangerous to a religion. So if you want to play the prophecy game, make sure that you have connection with the Almighty who determines the future. Otherwise, your credibility can be seriously hurt. Uh, Rabbi Mordecai Kraft, I hate to tell you, but the Vatican is not Christianity. Okay? Get that through that thick skull of yours, okay? You know, these people do this all the time, you know. Well, the Vatican, that's Christianity. That's a stupid mistake to make. I mean, show me in the New Testament where the word Vatican appears, or the word Pope, or the word Catholic, or the word nun, or the word, you know, N-U-N. I don't mean N-O-N-E, okay? You know, I mean, show me it. It's not there. You know, show me anywhere in the New Testament where, you know, people are eating Jesus Christ, flesh and blood, to be saved. It's not there. The teachings of Catholicism are pagan, it's Babylonian, it's Baal worship. But uh, I'm going to show you a possible place where, you know, this, this, some of this teaching might come from, that this thing of, of that the New Testament says that the Jews would never come back. Matthew chapter 21, verse 19. Actually, we'll start at verse 17. And he left them and went out of the city unto Bethany, and he lodged there. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree, now if you study it out in the Bible, a fig tree is a type of Israel. Uh, they're likened to a fig tree in the Old Testament. When he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit go on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Okay, now that was a prophetic reference to what was going to happen to the nation of Israel at that time. He says it to one fig tree. It's a prophecy of the Jews at that time. Turn to Matthew chapter 24. You say, no, it's, it's, uh, God's done with the Jews, permanently done with the Jews. Well, then you're calling Jesus Christ a liar. Because Jesus Christ is saying, I'm not finding any fruit here right now with the Jewish people. They're rejecting me as their king. They're rejecting, rejecting the kingdom of heaven. So they're going to fall. 
Matthew chapter 24, verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things uh, be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The fig tree, Israel, died in the first century. But it comes back. That's an accurate prophecy. Did it happen? Oh yeah. Jesus didn't fail at the prophecy. This lost Jewish rabbi failed at his interpretation. He's repeating a lie and trying to blame it, blame it on the Vatican. Interestingly, too, that uh, back in the 1960s, 1967, there, when they took, when the Jews took Jerusalem, the the Vatican was already trying to declare it an international city back then. Not just today, but they're trying. They've been trying to do it the whole time. The Vatican is the enemy, not the New Testament. Okay. Now we're not going to watch any more of the video. He goes on to go off on this big thing about uh, Amalek and everything, and and then how that Amalek is the German people, and that the German people are pigs and stuff like this. And because of Nazi Germany, therefore you condemn all the German people, even though there were Germans that helped Jews to escape. You know, not all the Germans were for what happened in Nazi Germany. You know, and he says that uh, the Germans, you know, the, this Talmud prophecy shows that, uh, you know, there was blonde hair and blue eyes of Amalek and stuff had blonde hair and, you know, Germania had this blonde hair, blue eyes. Well, I'd like to point out the fact that the Nazi hierarchy, Hitler, Goebbels, and a lot of these guys didn't even have blonde hair and blue eyes. So... <laughs> It's, it's a bunch of ridiculous nonsense, you know, and, and just, just hateful going through it. But, you know, he's a lost man. What do you expect? He's not saved. does not have the spirit of the Lord in him. So, uh, but let's, I'm going to show you the thing about this uh, prophecies thing. Because, I mean, what he said is absolutely true. If the New Testament cannot accurately pr prophesy the future, if Jesus Christ and Christians cannot accurately prophesy what's coming in the future, then the New Testament is not of God. That's a very true statement. So let's look here in Matthew chapter 24 at some of the prophecies. We're just going to, uh, I don't even have sermon notes for this thing. We're just going to read some of these prophecies and we're going to see if they've come true. Matthew chapter 24 beginning at verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, the second temple there, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Less than 40 years later it happened. Jesus gave a prophecy and it came to pass. Verse 3, And as he sat upon the, upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Is deception at an all-time high right now? Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. The lies that are out there. Just absolutely incredible. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, I've talked about this in other studies. Every Roman Catholic priest believes and According to official Catholic doctrine, they say that they are other Christs. The Pope is another Christ. And they are coming in the name of Jesus. And it's funny because Rabbi Mordecai Kraft actually has been deceived by men coming in the name of Jesus and saying, I am Christ. He's believed prophecies that the Vatican puts out as being the New Testament. And yet he doesn't have enough brains to go and read the New Testament for himself and look at the prophecies. And you know, oh, you're being rude and arrogant and stuff like that. Yeah, well, like a lot of the Jews are. Right? I'm just going to speak plain so you understand what I'm saying. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to just come around and be, well, you know, I'm politically correct and stuff. No. 
No. Times like these do not call for political correctness. It calls for bluntness and honesty. And I'm doing this out of love, too, by the way, for the Jewish people. If I didn't care about the Jewish people, I'd just let them go to hell. I just say, I don't care about you people. You, just, you don't believe the New Testament? Fine, go to hell, burn. I'm not that way. I'm doing these studies out of love. But let's continue. Verse 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You say, well, that, that's stupid. That's not a good prophecy. You know, there's always been war. The history of man has been a warfare all the time. That's not an accurate prophecy. Yeah, but you see, it's just part of what's going to be happening in these end times. The signs of thy coming and of the end of the world. Jesus is giving multiple parts to this thing. And you know something that's interesting? The most bloody century in the entire history of man, the entire history, recorded history, was the 20th century. Over 250 million people died in the 20th century as a result of war. Democide, they call it. Governments killing people. More bloodshed in just 100 years than in the rest of recorded history. Did Jesus accurately predict it? Mm -hmm. And we saw the prophecy just a little bit ago there where he predicts the return of Israel. The fig tree, the branches yet tender, they've been reborn. So again, Mordecai Kraft lied about that. Or he's ignorant. I hope he's just ignorant. I hope he's not lying about it. I hope he's not purposefully covering it up. But let's continue here. Verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. The USA doesn't produce enough food here in America to feed the American people. What happens if there's a war? Famine? Oh, sure. And pestilences. Are there lots of diseases, AIDS, Ebola, on and on and on and on and on and on and on, swine flu and all this other stuff? Oh, yeah. And earthquakes in divers places. In other words, in many, many different places. Uh, the increase in earthquakes is phenomenal. There's earthquakes all the time. I mean, they, the U.S. Geological Survey doesn't even count the ones that are under, like, 1.0 on the Richter scale or something like that. They don't even count them anymore. It's just almost non-stop. The earth is just shaking non-stop now. Now, who but God could predict that? Jesus Christ is God. Let's continue. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Are the Jews hated of all nations right now? Yeah. There's still some friends of the Jews out there. But uh, when the rapture happens, the bride of Christ is called up and leaves. Almost all the support for the Jewish people will be gone from off the face of the earth. And all you're going to have is enemies, people that hate you. Again, a prophecy of Jesus. Verse 10, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Very true. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. Welcome to 21st century. <laughs> Incredible. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Again, another prophecy. Another amazing prophecy. And, you know, you can go down through here. We're not going to go through all these uh, verses down through Matthew chapter 24. I suggest you get a New Testament and read it for yourself. King James Bible, of course. Um, and I've talked about that in other studies. You can look that up if you, if you need to understand why we are King James Bible believing. But uh, let's, let's go to a couple other New Testament prophecies. You know, we, we saw, and there's, there's plenty of other ones in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. There are plenty of other ones. But we're actually going to go into the Pauline epistles now, and we're going to look at some of the prophecies that are given in the Pauline epistles for these end times. Like I said, this is not going to be a real extremely in-depth study, but we're just going to hit some of the kind of the high points or whatever 
here. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 3, I'm sorry, chapter 4, excuse me, chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Is that true for today? Sure. Absolutely. Verse 2, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. They don't even have a conscience anymore. They can do things and, and kill people and whatever else. No conscience. And it's funny because they, the majority of uh, professing Christianity out there, they speak lies and hypocrisy all the time. They'll tell you the Word of God. God's Word says for you today, dear friend, and you think that this is God's Word that they're holding in their hands? They don't believe it's God's Word. I talked about that in other studies. I believe that this is God's Word, this King James Bible. I believe it's God's Word for the English-speaking people. But the majority of preachers out there, they don't believe it's the Word of God. Ask them. Ask them, is that book that you're holding there, is it perfect and without error and doesn't need to be changed or updated? They don't believe it for one second. They'll correct it every chance that they get. You can't correct God's Word. Think about that. If you can correct it, then you're smarter than God. Weird. <clears throat> Verse 3. Forbidding to marry. Hello, Catholics. And commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. But you see... Forced vegetarianism. Is there forced vegetarianism out there as a religious practice? Oh yeah. The Catholics do it. Sure. But you see there another prophecy of these end times. You say, well, it's still kind of general. It's still kind of just a general thing. It, you know, could, could those things appear in, in other you know, times and, and whatever. We're going to see some more specific ones as we continue here. I mean, these are definitely prophecies of these last times, but we'll continue. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Read down through here. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Are we living in perilous times? Sure, sure. How did they know it back then? Bible prophecy. And it's come true 100%. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Mm -hmm. Very true. Covetous. We see it all around us. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. That whole list there, you can go out in newspapers, on television, on the internet, wherever you want, and you can fill out that whole list there. You can say, there's somebody practicing covetousness, there's a blasphemer. There's somebody who's disobedient to their parents. There's somebody who's unthankful. There's somebody who's unholy, without natural affection, truce breaker, false accuser. You can point out everything in the list in abundance all throughout our society, no matter what country you live in. Anywhere in the world, you can fill out that whole list there. Just go that one, that one, that one, that one. You see, but it's still too general. Still too general. Let's continue. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 2, it says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Is that true? Yes, that time has come. 
I, you know, I, I'm just kind of hitting some of the more prominent uh, prophecies here of these end times. But there's plenty more that we could go over. You know, I mean, it's incredible. Some of the stuff that happens. Just thought of one here quick. I talked about this in my study on replacement theology, but 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, verse 4, it's talking about the Antichrist that's coming. It says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Um, where's the rebuilt temple, the third temple in Jerusalem right now? It's not there, but the plans are underway. How did they know that back then? Another prophecy. But if you want to get to the most well-known book of prophecy in the entire King James Bible, the entire New Testament, we will go to the book of Revelation. And I'm going to show you a couple interesting prophecies here that uh, you're going to have a real hard time refuting. You know, Mordecai Kraft here said that the, the prophecy has to be so extreme, so so strange, that there's just absolutely no way that you can predict it. Now you could say, well, wars, rumors of wars, there's always been war and pestilence and earthquakes and things like that. That's always been there, you know, but not on the level of what we have today. But uh, let's look at a couple prophecies that people denied even in the 20th century. I'll show you a good one. Revelation chapter 11, we're not going to read all these verses, but verse 1 down through uh, verse 7, we'll say, Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses that come back there, and I've done studies on that, it is definitely Moses and Elijah. You read about it in Malachi chapter 4, uh, there Moses represents the law, Elijah the prophets, Moses and Elijah show up in the Mount of Transfiguration. Okay, it's definitely Moses and Elijah. I have a FAQ on that. Um, but they get killed. Verse 8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which, is spiritually, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Jerusalem, in other words. Okay, but it's interesting because it's called that great city. Hmm. But um, verse 9, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and in half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Wait a second. How could the whole world see two dead men laying in the streets of Jerusalem in three days' time? They said, well, duh, that's easy. Satellite television. But who knew that when the New Testament was written? What do you do with that? You don't believe in prophecy in the New Testament. There's only one prophecy, and that's that the Jews wouldn't come back to their homeland. Uh, first of all, we prove that that's a lie. But secondly, what about this one there? Rabbi Mordecai Kraft or any other Jew out there that denies the New Testament has prophecies in it? How about satellite television? Prophesied in the New Testament. How about that? What are you going to do with that? But I'll show you an even better one. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. Speaking about the Antichrist in this one world government, the new world order that's coming. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. The infamous six, six, six. But the mark is in the hand. Or in the forehead. How does that work? And I can show you commentaries and things. Uh, the Defender Study Bible, Dr. Henry Morris. Uh, the Ryrie Study Bible. You know, uh, all these different commentators back in the 20th century are all going, actually, this is a mistranslation in the King James because you can't have a mark in the hand or in the forehead uh, to control buying and selling. But now you can. Prophecy that's come to pass just in the last number of years here. 
implantable microchips that can store all of your personal information. Hmm, interesting. And almost all of the new versions that come from the Vatican, be, they, be it NIV or NASV or ESV or all these other satanic new versions that are Vatican versions, they all say on the hand or on or upon the forehead or whatever. They all talk about that. King James Bible, 400 plus year old English translation, speaking about implantable microchips. A mark in the hand that controls buying and selling. What are you going to do with that? You see? And of course, like I said, there are many, many more prophecies within the New Testament. But you see, the test for a prophet, the test for something coming from God is, are these prophecies coming to pass? And by the way, when the body of Christ leaves, which is another prophecy, when the body of Christ is called away, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, when we leave, the time of Jacob's start, the time of J Jacob's trouble, excuse me, starts, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, if you know your Bible, and the whole book of Revelation becomes the playbook for that seven-year time of Jacob's trouble. And you get to see which judgment is coming next. And this New Testament, all of a sudden, is not going to seem so foolish anymore to the Jewish people. But then, unfortunately, it's going to be too late for a lot of them because they're going to receive the Antichrist as their Messiah. They're going to be deceived. And they're going to get slaughtered. Absolutely, totally slaughtered. I mean, if you're a Jew right now, I don't want you to believe me. I don't want you to just say, well, you know, this... Brian Denlinger guy said it, so I'm just going to believe it. I'm just going to believe whatever he says. I'm going to convert from Judaism to Denlingerism. Okay, don't do that. All right. Ask God to show you. God's nigh unto the, all them that call upon him. He's right there. He'll listen to you. You call out to God, get a copy of the King James Bible and say, Lord, God, I want to, or Jehovah, or whatever you want to call him, I want you to show me if this New Testament is accurate. I want you to show me if it's true. I'm not going to ask my rabbi. I'm not going to ask any Jews out there to go with Jewish scholars and things that, that have an agenda against Jesus Christ. I'm actually going to read this New Testament from Matthew chapter 1, the whole way to the end of the book of Revelation. I'm going to read it from a King James Bible. The others come from the Vatican. The Vatican's your worst enemy, okay, as a Jew. The Vatican's everybody's worst enemy, actually. But I'm going to read it for myself with God to guide me. And I'm going to actually see, is that New Testament accurate? Instead of believing a lying rabbi like Mordecai Kraft. He lied to him, to his Jewish students there. He lied right to him. Never even gave him a reference where the New Testament supposedly said that the Jews had never come back to their land. He lied. So that will be it for this video. I do pray that if you're Jewish that you will take the time to read that New Testament for yourself and not believe what rabbis tell you. We have the same problem in Christianity, okay? Same thing with, with Christians. You have pastors that don't know the Bible, pastors that have an agenda, and they'll lie right to your face. They speak lies and hypocrisy. So do the Jews. You better come to God and ask Him to show you the truth.